Do your aging parents insist that they're fine on their own, but you see some things that are concerning you and you worry about their future care needs? In this video, I'll share expert tips on how to gently initiate a conversation with your aging loved ones about future care needs, even if they might be reluctant to discuss it. We'll lay out a strategy to work through resistance about planning for future care needs that can let you stop worrying and your parents age well. It's so important to have conversations with your aging loved ones about their future care needs. My video on intentional dependence that I'll link below highlights the need to have these kind of conversations to have really good outcomes where your parents can maintain control as they age. In that conversation, they get to express their desires of what they want to have happen so they can work collaboratively with you rather than telling you they're fine and relying on a system that they established when they were younger and everything was going well. This can be a really sensitive topic for many people. It can trigger worries about aging or loss of control, and you're certainly not trying to do that. You're actually trying to do the opposite to help them maintain control in the healthiest way possible. So let's talk about a strategy for initiating the conversation and working through objections. First, choose the right time and setting. Pick an environment that is quiet and free from distractions. No, the 10 year anniversary reunion of the entire family is probably not a good place for it. Do it at a time where everybody's relaxed and you're not feeling rushed. Explore and collaborate, but don't preach. Establish a curious mindset where you actually want to know what do you want mom and dad and listen to their answers. This is not the time or place for you to assert what you think they should do. Start with general topics and then progress to specifics. Begin the discussion talking about their current well-being, daily routines or schedules, and what's really going well. Shift the discussion to ask any challenges they might see or any concerns they might have, and then feel free to voice your own concerns in a positive way. Gradually move on to specific concerns about the future, such as what your parents won't be able to do by themselves at some point due to just normal aging or any problems that can come up. Stress that everyone needs help eventually, no matter how healthy or active or independent they might be. This can help your loved one not feel like you're accusing them of failing and can work around their objection that, oh, we're fine and we're not gonna need help for a long time. Remember, everyone needs help eventually. Listen actively and empathetically. Encourage your loved ones to express their thoughts, their feelings, and their concerns. Validate their emotions and acknowledge their preferences and the things that they really care about and take notes so you can come back to specific points later. At this point, you can transition to talking about options for more care when it's needed. As you do this, you're going to explore the different care options, starting with the least intrusive, and then for each time that you talk about a level, you'll say, okay, and what about when that much help isn't enough? What do you want then? We'll go through six different steps. Step one hiring people to help out around the house. This is the most common form of help that people often use throughout their lifetime, so it's generally not a threatening idea. This might be, oh, we're hiring somebody to help out with the yard work, or we've hired a house cleaner that comes every three weeks or so. This is a pretty standard way of operating for a lot of people. They might be already doing it. Step two, talking about what ideas or expectations or desires they might have for family helping out with some tasks. This might be a handy daughter-in-law or son-in-law who comes over to fix something that's broken or help out in the backyard or helping with moving heavy things around. It can progress to other things that they might want done when they can no longer do them. It's really important to listen to their desires of what they would like you or other family members to do and write them all down. Don't take the time or the emotional energy to react to them at that point. Simply make note of them and then later on you can go back and review them and consider what things would I actually be capable of doing and willing to do. Step three, discussing in-home care. 
As people need more help, it's a pretty common scenario to say, okay, we could have a volunteer or paid caregiver come to the home and help out for a few hours. With the paid version, this often involves three or four hours at a time, maybe starting with one or two days a week and potentially progressing to more days a week. Discuss whether or not this would be desirable to your parents. Discuss also, is this affordable for your parents? Yes, finances can be a tricky topic, but if you're not willing to broach them and ask, we need to actually think about what things you can afford, the conversation won't be as useful. Step four, consider and discuss, is anybody excited about the idea of having your parents move in with a family member? Sometimes there's not a family member available for this to work. Sometimes there is a family member, but it's just not feasible with the circumstances. And sometimes there's a family member, it's feasible, but nobody wants this to happen. <laughs> sometimes it's a great fit and it works for everyone involved. So that's an option that should be at least discussed and considered. If that's not a good option for your family, then the next discussion could turn to the idea of a retirement community. Would that ever make sense for your parents? Would that ever be something desirable for them to provide them with potential social opportunities and other opportunities for more resources in one place? That can be a topic of conversation. Step five, thinking about the idea, if none of those other options were working, of whether or not your parents would ever want to move into something called assisted living. There's still independence here. They would live in their own apartment. They would have their own uh, freedoms and abilities to do things for themselves, but there would be more support on site to do things that they couldn't do themselves. There's often more access to meals, recreation, fun activities, and socialization. Is this something that's appealing to your parents? Is this something they hate? Is this something that they could potentially afford? And step six, the idea of moving to something that has a higher level of care when necessary. This might be something like a nursing home or a memory care unit. When your parents envision having that level of problems where they might be wandering or they might need such extensive care, do they want to be in a facility like that? Is that appealing to them at all? Not saying, yay, that's where I wanna live my final years, but is it a better alternative to anything else that you can come up with? Is this affordable for your family? As you're going through and discussing the pros and cons of each option, money will come up. This is an important topic because if somebody can't afford something, it's difficult to look at that as an option. If you're not aware of how much things cost or what your parents' financial situation is, the part that you can do is to start looking into the cost factor. There are organizations that can talk to you about what different levels of care might cost and what that might look like for your family. There's plenty of information online as well. When you've done that homework and you reviewed the cost of these different options, that can be put on the table. There may be conversations about the existence or need for long-term care insurance, for government assistance, or some other kind of financial support. It may make sense for your parents to consult with their current financial planner, if they have one, or a financial planner who is used to talking to older people about the future. This leads us to the idea of talking about legal matters and documentation. It makes sense to discuss the importance of having things like a will, a power of attorney, and advanced healthcare directives in place. It makes so much sense to consult with an attorney who specializes in elder law to make sure that all of the pieces are taken care of appropriately. Finally, you'll create an action plan. This is a baby step, step-by-step -step action plan on which pieces need to happen next. You can assign roles and responsibilities to different family members so you don't have to do it all yourself, but working together is the key. Now, with all of the information we discussed today, you might say to yourself, there's no way this could all happen in one session, and I agree. But by breaking it down and remaining curious and open, truly wanting to understand your parents' preferences and desires, you can make progress toward a plan that actually will work. You may also want to gift yourself and your parents a really useful book. It's called Things to Remember Before I Forget, My Plan for My Care by Nikki Tucker and Jenna Tucker. 
It's an excellent outline of conversations and topics that you will want to discuss to understand your parents' or any loved one's preferences as they age. I'll link it below, and you can also check out my video where I review it and show how it works. Feel free to pass this information along to anybody you think might benefit, and thanks so much for coming. Bye.